Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Center Power waterproof 12 volt 20 watt solar battery charger and maintainer. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reading it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So let's get this open here. Pull this out. Okay. So I'll flip it over. So here we have some cables and the manual. I'll pull this open. Okay, let's look at the manual here. So this has a built-in MPPT charge controller. That's maximum power point tracking. So that's going to make this more efficient than a panel that has a PWM charge controller. So here are the instructions. I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera, but you could pause and read through all these if you want. I'll just cover some parts of it. It says high efficiency monocrystalline solar cells. So in the Amazon description, it said polycrystalline. But when I look at these cells, they look like monocrystalline cells. So I think this is correct. That they are monocrystalline cells. Has the built-in MPPT technology, smart three-stage charging system, LED indicator light, it's IP65 waterproof, has overcharge, over-discharge, reverse charge, and short circuit protection, plug-and-play SAE connector, durable ABS frame and tempered glass, well built for years use. So this comes with the panel, we have the front and back view, then it comes with three cables. We have one that goes into a cigarette lighter, one that has bare wires, and one that has battery clamps. So that gives you multiple options for connecting this. So here it says it's designed to be used with 12-volt AG GM flooded gel deep cell and lead acid batteries in motorcycles, cars, caravans, boats, RVs. It could be lawnmowers, golf carts. I mean, there's so many things you could connect this to. Anything that has a 12 volt lead acid battery would work well. So it says step one, face the front side of the solar panel to the sun. Make sure there's no shadow cast on the solar panel. Place the long side of the solar panel at the south to north direction. Tilt the panel at a suitable angle. The right angle should be the same as your local latitude. If permanent installation is required, use the four stainless steel mounting screws to increase heat dissipation. The heat resistance resistant spacer should be used between the panel and the surface. It talks about the cables here. It talks about the LED indicator. So this tells you how it's charging. Here's a little tip. It says when dealing with other SAE cables, beware that the polarity may be reversed. So different solar panels, chargers, accessories might have different polarity than what this has. So that's something to keep in mind and something you want to test. And it says the performance may be reduced if it's a cloudy day or if you have shadows, you want to have maximum sun. And that's true of any solar panel. If you have a shadow of a leaf in the middle of it, that can greatly diminish the efficiency of it like very very significantly or if it's a cloudy day you really need maximum sun to get good efficiency out of it so here are the tech specs here you can read through the different voltages and such let's see what else we have here this looks like it talks about how to test your solar panel so let's look at the panel itself here you can see the cells i don't know if it's easier with the light off so the reason I think this is monocrystalline, polycrystalline, you'll have like kind of a crystal looking structure on the panels itself or on the cells. And I don't see that here. So this looks like monocrystalline and we have the plastic around the edge. We do have mounting holes. So if you're mounting this on say a shed, you could put this on the shed and you'd probably want to put some spacers behind it. So it has good ventilation. So this is a 20 watt panel. So it's a good size panel for something like trickle charging. And it comes with this cable connected to it. It's an SAE cable. The cord is a little over nine feet long. And then in this pack, here we have a number of adapters and we also have four mounting screws so it does come with screws now this adapter will hook up to pretty much any battery you plug this in here like so and you connect these up to the battery on the positive and negative terminals and you can charge the battery. This plugs into the cigarette lighter of your car. Now one thing to consider is a lot of modern cars, the cigarette lighter outlet or the 12 volt outlet is deactivated when you shut the car off. So you have to have it in accessory mode to have power to this. So you want to check your car before relying on this. What I did on one of my cars is I wired in a separate outlet directly to the battery so it always has power. So I can plug this in and I can charge the battery from inside the car using that socket without turning the car on. Now the third option option is just a lead here. So what you could do here is put some terminals on this. If you're doing this for permanent installation, I would put a fuse on the positive side, but you could put some leads on here and you could connect this directly to your battery and then you could plug this into your battery or whatever other application you want. This comes with a bare lead, so you don't have to cut one of these other connectors. That makes it nice. So if you have this wired into something for, say you have it on a shed and then you need to hook it up to a car or RV, even just for a few days, you could unplug it here, take this over, and connect it up to another battery while leaving this connector in place. So I have a vehicle that I don't drive very often and I like to use a trickle charger on it, especially in the winter time, because I rarely drive it in the winter time. So I'm going to go head out and we'll connect this up to that car and take a look at it charging. Okay, so I have the positive clamp hooked to the positive terminal and the negative hook to the negative terminal. And I have the cable here 
going to here and we can see the panel is charging. This red light is flashing. I don't know if that's going to come out there. Now I want to show in my vehicle. Now I previously had a socket here in my vehicle, but I had to use those power cords for something else. But I am actually going to be putting it back. I'm going to tap into those power cords so they can be dual purpose. And then I'll be able to plug it in here and leave the panel in my car. Previously what I've done is I've actually put the panel on top of my sunroof and I like to leave it cracked so airflow can get to it so it doesn't get too hot. But I'll put that up there in the winter time and it has pretty good sun exposure and it should be enough to keep the battery charged. So over here I have my camper and I have this connector on the side for solar charging and it has an SAE connector but if I read my meter right this is reverse polarity from the solar panel so you'll want to check yours don't go on what I'm saying but check yours make sure it's the same and if it's not the same you can buy a polarity reverser it's a thing you'll plug in here and you'll plug the panel into it and you can use that to charge your RV battery so I won't be doing that on mine because I actually have a solar panel on top of my RV but if I didn't have a solar panel on top this would be a good way to maintain my battery I could plug the solar panel in here and it would keep my battery fresh so when I go camping I don't have to charge it up ahead of time especially if you're not running any accessories in between camping trips. Now I actually have a battery monitor hooked up to this battery so we're looking at the app on my phone and it's currently charging at 13.41 volts and I've had it hooked in for just a couple minutes now. Let's look at the chart if it will come up. Here you can see it had about 12 and a half volts in it and then I plugged in the charger and now you can see it's up above 13 volts meaning it's charging. So I'm going to leave this here for a while and I'll come back and check and hopefully I can get another capture of this chart where you can see the charging on it. Okay, it's a little later in the day, and actually when I started recording that, it was getting to the point where the car was going to be covered with shade. It gets most of its sun in the morning. So you can see here, we had some charging up above 13 volts, and now it's just charging just below 12 volts, but it is charging right now. Even though it's in the shade, it's just charging at quite a bit lower amount. So being a larger panel like this, I can get most of the charging in during the morning when it has full sunlight, because it's going to charge quicker than having a smaller solar panel. So that's the center power. 12 volt, 20 watt solar battery charger and maintainer. I really like the build quality of this, it feels sturdy. I think this is gonna be a great option for keeping my battery charged. I previously used a smaller panel, and especially on the dark days of the winter, it would have trouble keeping the battery charged. With this being a larger panel, with the shorter sun during the day, it'll charge more while the sun is out. So that'll really come in handy. But there are many options for this. You could use this on an RV to keep your battery topped off, motorcycle, yard equipment, you name it. The nice thing about using a solar panel is you don't have to run a cable plugged into a wall to your vehicle. This can be self-contained. So if you have a car stored out on a lot away from electrical outlets, you can use this to keep your battery maintained. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.